uh, I was recording in, in, in Memphis, uh, and, I, and I, it must have been about 68 or 69, I wasn't with the Righteous Brothers at the time, and uh, I'd record during the day with Chip's moment, and, 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 and one of Elvis's guys would come and get me and, and at night and, and take me to Graceland. And, uh, and it was just great. So we'd hang out and have dinner and this and that. And one night he went, and this is my one really claim to fame. Uh, he said, we're we're, tonight we're, we're going to go to the movie show. And this, all the stories you heard that he would rent the theater, well, that was the truth. He'd just rent the theater, so it was just us. But, well, him and the boys, you know, the Memphis guys. And so uh, we walk outside to go to, uh, go to the... Uh, the theater and there's Elvis's limo. So Elvis uh, said, Bill, you know, you get in the back. Actually, he said, ah, you know, man, I just want, and I thought that meant get in the back seat. So uh, I got in the back seat, Elvis and Priscilla got in the front seat, and we're going down the driveway at, uh, at Graceland, and Elvis is driving. And we go, and we get down to the gate where there was always about 200 screaming people, and the gate opens, and here comes Elvis's limo, and we go through the gate, and not one person looked in the front seat. Everybody looked in the back, and here I am. And uh, I've never seen so many disappointed people in my life. But that was it. that was the first time, uh, you know, like really kind of hanging out and spending some great time. And then uh, when we were, I was at the Sands Hotel by myself. And this was before he started uh, in Vegas. And Elvis in those days was really kind of the Howard Hughes of rock and roll. Nobody ever saw him. He, wouldn't do, he wasn't doing shows. He was just hung up doing all those movies. I, I used to do a thing in my, in my show where I would do a thing about Elvis. I just want to tell you, man, I, and I never understood a word he was saying. And, and his, his boys beat me on him. And, and so, I'm at the Sands Hotel, I understand this is like in 68, you know, it's, Vegas was a whole different deal. And the, Maynard D is about 80 years old and he brings me a note about 10 minutes after I'd done this Elvis thing and, and the note says, he's here. I said, well, who's here? I said, I, I said because Elvis is never anywhere. I said, I suppose Elvis Presley's here and from the back of the room, Elvis jumps up and starts singing, singing something. Like, you know I can be fine. And the the lights went up, and this the place went, I, without exaggeration, went up. It took me about 20 minutes just just to get him back. And uh, and so and he, so a couple of times he he came into Vegas to see me. Then when he opened at the at the uh, International. Uh, I had finished up my run in Vegas at the Sands Hotel, and uh, I ended up over uh, where Elvis was. And, and I always thought that Elvis probably uh, said, "Listen, I want I want Medley here," because every time he was here, oddly enough, I was in the lounge. I was I was there, and and I went there. I was there like two years, and I had to redo my deal. And they said you can be here as long as you want. You can do anything as you anything you want. So, uh, and, and one one night, uh, see, because Elvis would go on at eight, I'd go on at ten. Elvis would go on at twelve, and I'd go on at two. And I'm doing my ten o'clock show, and Elvis was walking, uh, uh, walking, you know, back through the kitchens and the stuff. And he and he walks uh, past my showroom in the back, and I'm doing Love and Feeling, and he used to do Love and Feeling in his show. And, and he stops the guys, and he says, hey, uh, Bill's doing my song, man. So they, so they come in the back door, and I'm on stage, and when you're on stage, it's like you're in your living room at night, and if somebody walks in, it's really kind of startling. You know where everybody is, and there's some rustling from the side, and, uh, and, and here comes Elvis Presley and about four of his bodyguard, four of the, the Memphis guys. And he just walks by me and hits me on the arm, says, hi, Bill, and keeps on going. And I don't know what, I don't know what the bodyguards were. I didn't know if, maybe he thought I was going to jump him. 
on stage. But they walk by, and obviously the crowd just wigs out. Now, and I don't, I don't say anything. And he just walks off. And now I'm doing my two o'clock show. And in, the, in those days, the town was small enough that everybody in town knew that Elvis Presley walked on stage with Bill Medley. Because at least in one of his books, it said he had never been on stage with another artist or something like that. And uh, so the, there was lines to get in my show. Line, like, like he's going to do it again. So the show starts, and I'm doing Loving for You, and I'm right at the baby, baby. I get down, on, you know, and here he comes again. Here he comes again, and and this, and he walks by, hits me, hi, bro, and they all now hit me. And now he had like eight of his Memphis guys and about ten of, of uh, the security guys at the hotel. And they all walk by, hi, bro, and I'm, if you, you know, Lonely love me like you, and I'm trying to do the song. And uh, so finally I get done. The place, I mean, people are throwing babies out of windows. I mean, they are literally going nuts because that's what they were and didn't think they were going to see it. But, uh, and so finally it calms down. I just stood there. It was almost a Jack Benny moment, like one of those. Just waited, and they finally calmed down. I said, okay. I don't know who he is, but now he's starting to piss me off. <laughs> and Elvis heard I said that, and he and he and he called, he, he called my dresser. He said, "Bill, I, I hope I wasn't messing up." I said, "Are you kidding me?" I said, "My next show's at eight, eight o'clock. Could you be there, please?" And uh, and he was a he was a really uh, really good guy. And 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 the the great thing was is that. Like when he would be getting ready for his midnight show and, and I would be sitting in my dressing room, he would call a lot of times and say, um, Bill, come, come down to the dressing room. And I would go down, it would be just uh, Elvis and his, uh, his hairdresser. And he, and, and he would send all the boys up to get in their, their positions. And so I would, you know, Elvis and I would sit there, I, I don't know, probably 40, 50 times, just sit, him and I, so I really got to know Elvis, not, you know, the Elvis Presley. We really had some great one-on-one -on -one time, and we were both huge fans of Roy Orbison. I mean, well, yeah, Roy Orbison, but, but Roy Hamilton. And uh, his favorite song was Unchained Melody by Roy Hamilton, not the Righteous Brothers. Uh, but um, so I really got to know him really, really well and very comfortable about you know, just a couple of guys uh, sitting and talking. And one night, this, this is one of the strangest things that's ever happened to me, is that he says, come, he says, come on upstairs, you know, upstage and, uh, and watch me go on. I said, okay. So I went and we're, we're backstage in the wings and that band starts that 2000 thing. Boom! And oh, you now in the women are screaming, and I'm like, jeez, the, the, you know, the, the, the emotion and the, t it just got like, it was nuts, and and they were starting to, you know, fix him up a little bit, make sure it was in, and so I bet, so I backed away a little bit, about ten feet, and uh, and they're getting him ready, and and he, you know, he's, you know, looking over me and, you know, saying, you're all right, and boy, and the kid, and. And, it's the, and it was the first time I, I saw him from about 12 feet away in the shadows with that band playing that 2000 and the girl screaming. I said, holy criminy, that's Elvis Presley. You know, I got, I got so comfortable with him that that's, I got so excited I almost went on. Mm -hmm. <laughs>